A lot of people forget this. You can have the greatest ad in the world on Facebook. If nobody stops to consume the ad, if nobody, if nobody actually clicks into the video to listen to what's going on, you could have the best ad in the world that nobody clicked on and nobody listened to. It doesn't matter how good the ad is if no one stops, okay, to do something with it. I just want to show you like how fun it can be once you kind of crack the code on, you know, making fun Facebook ads. So this is how you come up with great Facebook ad ideas is you have someone who can hold up a camera and someone has an idea, you stop what you're doing and you film it. That's like the best way to make Facebook ads. It's not to like plan things out with creative and all that crazy stuff. So I'll just give you a kind of lead in on this, on how, how this ad um, was derived. So we're sitting in our office, Caitlin, who does videography for us, comes up to me, says, hey, I want to create a, uh, a, an ad of what, what your life is like. What you, if your business was a dance, how boring would it look if you where you are now versus how much fun would that dance look like if you registered or click the link below? OK, so uh, this, that's it. That's all she said. And then we just started filming. OK. That's it. 45 second ad done. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to show us that because you've seen you've seen uh, myself, Andy and others as we make Facebook ads. Um, a lot of them are just just funny. The point is this Facebook and Instagram as a platform, they are designed to entertain right at the end of the day. Facebook and Instagram are not educational platforms. They're designed to entertain people and keep them distracted from whatever it was they were doing throughout their day, right? So we want to make sure that um, when we're approaching Facebook and Instagram, we're not using a YouTube or Google focused strategy uh, as search engines. The strategy is completely different as to what works on Facebook and Instagram. Think lighthearted, think very zoomed out educational information um, and think kind of uh, what can you do to capture someone's attention without spending a lot of money. Uh, that, that's what I'm always thinking when I'm going into Facebook and Instagram as a platform. I'm showing you these ads to show you that it requires no editing, no crazy amount of, um, no crazy amount of, of money invested to create funny videos that work. It just cre it takes about 15 minutes of thinking and sketching things out. So this ad, I just showed you the dance party ad. Okay, I'm gonna show you the bad expert ad that we made. We basically, uh, Andy and I hopped on a call at 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday. We said, we need to create an ad, a last chance ad for the summit. So we started fleshing out ideas and we thought, hook, value offer right um so we decided to make the hook a uh a um uh, comedic hook to keep the attention of the audience and make it a charming ad so i'll just show you what it looks like and i just want to give you one point here all i did was all we did was call each other on our phones and we did this through zoom there's no crazy wacky editing here all we did is call each other on zoom on our phones when I talk, the camera goes on my face. When he talks, the camera goes on his face. That's it. Everyone following? These are fresh off the press, okay? So ready? This is the first time you're probably ever gonna see this. Dude, Andy, guess what? I just hired a fitness coach and he's uh, teach me how to do push-ups right now. Come on, you can get one, right? Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your elbow like this, okay? Okay, hold on, got it, yeah. 
Uh, okay, it looks like I, I, he's teaching me the theory of how to do push-ups, which I'm really excited about. Well, that's cool. That's all you know, really need, right? For example, I just hired a brand new financial advisor. And the thing is, is that he doesn't really have any money. So he actually, it's funny, he actually had to borrow some money from me. But um, he, he really knows the theory of how to invest. So I think that once he gets it all figured out, like it's really going to work out for me. It's going to be great. Yeah. And, and Emily and I have been going through financial problems. So we actually decided to, to hire a relationship coach. He's on his third marriage, but he's going to teach us the theory. He's almost getting that push up. He's going to teach us the theory yeah. of, of how to improve our relationship. You know, what would be really good for you and Emily is I actually just hired this meditation expert. I met him a couple, where did I meet him? Oh, right. I met him at the psych ward when I was in there for that, that, you know, the psych that, ward. that crazy time that I had. Um, I met him in there and he just, you know, he just really kind of, he just gets it. You know what I mean? Wait, 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 time out, guys. You're doing everything that you tell lawyers not to do. What's going on here? Like, yeah. come on. It's a good point. Yeah. Like, for example, like we wouldn't tell a lawyer to go learn intake from someone who hasn't mastered intake in their own practice. Right. You, you know, you're right. I always tell lawyers, stop learning how to do marketing from people who've never even generated a lead before. Yeah. And like team building, like you would never suggest to a lawyer to go learn how to build a team from someone who hasn't built a team in their firm. Right. Who was one employee. It's kind of like going and, and learning how to make clients happy through their entire customer journey from a law firm that has one star reviews on Google. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's a good point. And that's why we put together the Lawyer Mastermind Summit filled with practitioners, literally on how you can revitalize your social media. You're okay, so again, the derivation of this ad that I'm showing you right now, we had it sketched out on a piece of paper. Okay, so this is how you come, all of our best performing Facebook ads we've ever created, spur of the moment, sketched out on a piece of paper, funny uh, beginning, middle, ending, with a clear call to action at the end. So we said, this is how the concept came up. Okay, I texted Andy, I said, let's make an ad on why people shouldn't hire a fitness coach who can't do a push-up, right? And what we wanted to relate this to was how people learn from people who haven't done, they, they haven't been practitioners in, in what, what they want to teach, right? So then we picked up the phone, we called each other, we worked through the concept of the app. We said, well, what, uh, what are other funny things we wouldn't want to hire people for? Well, we wouldn't want to hire a broke financial advisor. Well, we wouldn't want to hire a relationship coach on their third marriage. Well, we wouldn't want to hire a blah, 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 blah. So we went, just let our creative stuff go out. We sketched it all on a piece of paper, right? And then we said, how can we relate this to our upcoming summit, right? And we said, oh, well, just like uh, we wouldn't hire a fitness coach who can't do a push-up, a lawyer shouldn't listen to how to revamp their intake process from someone who hasn't done it before. A lawyer shouldn't learn how to generate leads from someone who's struggling with leads. The hook was the trainer can't, who can't do a push-up. The value was we related it to lawyers. And then the offer at the end of the ad is click the link below if you want to learn from practitioners instead of theorists, like the trainer who can't do a push up. So it's a volume game. Facebook is a testing platform. Okay, it's very different than Google. Google is more of a science based platform. Facebook's more like you throw a lot of crap on the wall and you see what works. Very big difference. There's a lot of analytics and science behind what people type in on Google. It's so weird on Facebook. You got to just keep testing and testing and testing. And the ads burn out on Facebook, meaning once you've shown an ad too many times to your audience, there's, there's, a, there's usually less than a two month shelf life on, on an evergreen ad. Um, that's why event based ads work the best. Like if you're running a webinar with an actual date on the webinar, a real life date, they tend to work better because there's real urgency. It's not false urgency, which people can see through now. So um, that's, that's just a little tidbit to think through. And to make that date and time crystal clear on the ad is important because then they know it's not just a, a run of the mill everyday ad.